Now that you've learned about the basic settings in Adobe Lightroom, what about a tutorial on how to apply these to only a part of your image? Welcome to the first of two classes about the Lightroom Adjustment Brush. Lightroom is so much more powerful than most people think, and after the first two basic classes, the fun now really starts. In this tutorial, I'm going to guide you through the Lightroom Adjustment Brush and show you that you don't have to use Photoshop for most of your work. The big advantage of using Lightroom over Photoshop is that you can go back and undo changes, even after years. So let's get started. You will find the Adjustment Brush right above the Basic tab in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. Let's click on the brush and we will see a lot of settings that are almost identical to the ones in the Basic tab, plus a few more. We can now brush any of those settings onto our images. Usually you do that after you do all the Basic settings for the complete image. Let's start with something rather simple. In this shot, the helmet of the mountain biker casts a very strong shadow on the face. And that looks rather weird. So let's brighten only this part of the image. With the adjustment brush selected, I first have to set the size of the brush. I can do that by either using the mouse wheel or the keyboard shortcuts, which would be square bracket, or I use the size slider down here. And then I'll paint over the shady area. At the moment we don't see anything. Why? Because we haven't changed any of the settings yet. So let's lift the exposure, like so, and the shadows quite a bit, like that. And now I feel the skin is a little bright, so I lower the highlights, like that. Let's turn the adjustment brush off using this button here to see the difference. You see? That tiny little adjustment already made such a big change to your image. When I review the changes of the local adjustments, I often find this pin here distracting, to say the least. Now, how can I hide that? It's very easy, pressing H on the keyboard. H for hide. Press it again and it will display again. But you can also set that down here, show edit pins. You can choose between auto, which will remove the pin once you move your mouse out of the editing window, or always, which is pretty self-explanatory, never, and selected. Selected means that when you have two adjustment brushes, let's make a new one, paint it here, you will only see the one that is selected rather than all of them. I mainly use the keyboard shortcut H. By the way, talking about keyboard shortcuts, if you haven't already downloaded it, we have provided a link of what we think are the most important keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom down in the description below. Did you like the content so far? Why not subscribe, put your thumbs up or leave a comment to keep me motivated producing more content. While we are down here, let me show you another cool tool, the checkbox for show selected mask overlay. If we click it, what will happen is we see a graphical overlay in red of the area that is affected by our changes. If I paint here, you will see the area will increase. I can display that overlay either by checking the checkbox here or by selecting the keyboard shortcuts O for overlay. Let's keep the overlay, delete the pin in the sky and click on the one in the face. And what we will see is that the area that is affected exceeds the shadow area. Let's correct that. Do we have to start from scratch? No, we don't. Lightroom has a cool function to erase a part of the local adjustment area. By pressing Alt or Option on the keyboard, you will see that the plus in the center of our brush changes to a minus. Let me quickly introduce you to 
this symbol. It means that I'm pressing the Alt key on my keyboard to use the eraser brush. Without that symbol, you might get confused when I'm using the regular adjustment brush and when I'm using the eraser brush. And now we can erase instead of add to the selection. You could also click erase down here, but in this case, it is much quicker to just press the Alt key. Another cool thing is that I can separately adjust the size of the brush for the eraser. So I will choose a smaller brush here and erase parts of the selection of the sky, like so, and on the helmet. Oops, seems like I went a bit too far. You don't always have that much control with the brush tool, but don't worry, Lightroom has another cool tool. So let's undo that for the moment by pressing Command Z and select the Auto Mask checkbox here. Now I can paint over the helmet area and even over the shadow area without having it erased. And that even works with a much harder brush. Now let me show you how you can reduce the feather of the brush, either by the slider here or by using the keyboard shortcuts shift bracket keys. So let's reduce it all the way. I will now paint with this very hard brush over the skin area, but let me zoom in a bit using the Z key. Get up here and now let's paint over this area like so. Just like that. And now I can clean up by deselecting the auto mask. Like so, up here in this area, like that. Now let's fine tune this a little bit because if I hide the overlay pressing the O key, I see that the areas here are rather rough. So I choose a very soft feather, a rather big brush, not too big. And then I paint over these areas. So you get a much better transition between the brush and the other area. There you go. If that was too quick for you, rewind a bit and rewatch, because these are the fundamental basics of the Lightroom adjustment brush. I will now show you some examples how to use it. So understanding how it works will greatly help you follow along. I also recommend finding the one or the other image in your own Lightroom archives and playing with it. Because using your own files to play with the settings rather than mimic what I do will greatly help you understand all the Lightroom tools. Okay, on to our next image. I want to zoom in a bit. I can do that by using the Control Command equal key and zoom out by Control minus key. Again, zoom in. And then I use the space bar and click and drag with my mouse to center the image. Zoom out again, like that. First, I feel the left part of his face is too bright. So I paint with a big soft brush over his face. But it gets even brighter. Why is that? Because Lightroom remembered the settings of our mountain biker. But of course, we don't want that. So I'll just reset the settings of this adjustment brush by double clicking on the word effect. Something I like to do when using the adjustment brush and painting over an image is reducing the exposure all the way so that I can better see where I paint it. I'll also paint on the arms, on this side and there, like that. Of course, I could also use the O key for the overlay, but most of the time I prefer this method but you will see me using both of them. Time to work on the settings. I reset the exposure by double clicking on it and then I reduce it again to around that. I also reduce the highlights. And since we now have very dark shadows due to the harsh sunlight, I lift the shadows like that. If we now zoom out, we will see that the grass area beside the boy is also affected by our brush. We don't want that, so we press the Alt key again, uncheck the auto mask, and brush 
over this area. Like so. Now that I take a second look, I feel the skin down here is too dark. So let's remove the effect, like so and so. But now it's too bright again. So what can we do? First, let me undo that by pressing Command Z. One, two. And now, instead of erasing it completely, I can change the flow of the brush down here. So I press Alt for the eraser, I reduce the flow to 50%, and then I paint over it. And the longer I paint, the more it will get erased. So I have very much control now over how it looks. That, of course, does not only work for the eraser, but also for the brush itself. Now, let's consider this is still too bright. So we make a new brush, we reset the brush settings, exposure down like that, and we paint with a flow of 50% with the brush over the shoulder, like that. Now, that's too much, of course, because minus 4 is way too dark, but let's do it like that. And you see, the shirt is now correctly exposed. I will explain the flow and the density down below even further when we reach this image. But for now, let's continue on that one. What I forgot is that the skin is rather yellow. I don't want that. So I select this pin and lower the color temperature on this selection. Not too much, because the sunset has to be somewhat yellow. So let's look at our changes by turning off and on the adjustment brush. Well, that's already pretty massive, but we are not there yet. I feel the opposite side of the face is too dark. You know the trick. We're going to create a new brush. We paint over the face. Reset the exposure. And now we lift the exposure a tad bit and the shadows, like so. Now here is a little halo. I want to get rid of that. Bigger brush, soft edge and paint over that, like so. Now this time I'm going to use the overlay and I will see I also painted over the brighter side of the face. I don't want that, so let's brush over this. I'm still here at flow 50%. I want to make this 100. So I paint with the brush over the bright side of the face, like so. Then I turn off the overlay again by hitting the O key. And I want to raise the color temperature of the right side of the face because it is lit by the blue sky rather than the yellow sun. Then let's do some fine tuning. I see a paint over there like there, and maybe a bit over here. The last thing I want to do is, let's zoom in a bit, like so, is to remove this bright spot in his eye. So I create another new brush, and I paint over the iris, like that. Now, that's a little much, like so. That looks much better. Let's zoom out again and see the before and after, before and after. It is not perfect yet, but I think you get the idea. So let's move on to the next image. This is one of our main attractions in my hometown, Vienna. It's called Castle Schönbrunn. The foreground is okay, I like the garden, but what I don't like is the castle looks a bit dull because it is lit from the side or maybe even from the back. And I want to change that. With the adjustment brush selected, this time I reset all the effects, so also the exposure, and press O on the keyboard to show the overlay. This time that works better, and then I paint over the castle. Next, I zoom all the way in using command control equal. Press the Alt key for the eraser brush, reduce the size and check the auto mask tool. And now I will paint away the mask from the sky area. 
What I recommend is doing it in small steps, releasing your mouse button every now and then, because if you make a mistake, like here, you have to redo everything. You can just press Command Z and undo it, and then you start over again. This is a lengthy process, so I will now fast forward so that you don't have to wait. Okay, I've done the edges. What I now do is use a bigger brush and reduce the feather and paint over the rest. Again, I will fast forward to save you some time. Okay, finished. Next, I will zoom out. Choose a bigger brush, even bigger than before, and uncheck the auto mask option like that and paint over the rest of the sky. And finally, to get a smooth transition between the brush and the other areas, I choose a big brush with a big feather, no auto mask, and paint over this area. Like that. Perfect selection. So now let's get rid of the overlay and start the fun after the boring part. Let's lift the exposure. Now that might look a little much, but let me give you a tip. When you edit images, do reset your eyes from time to time. Let's check the boy image again and then get back to the castle. You see, doesn't look all that bright anymore. Okay, let's continue. I bring up the contrast quite a bit. Reduce the highlights because some parts of the buildings are lit by the sun. I bring the shadows all the way because I want the, sh the windows to be visible. And what I like to do with buildings in general is increase the clarity quite a bit and a bit of saturation. And that's it. Out of a mediocre image, we made a beautiful, colorful memory. Next one, me photographing a waterfall. This is a great example that you cannot always get it right in camera. Sometimes you just have to edit. Now let me show you why. I'm going to reset that image and you see the clouds are overexposed and the foreground up to here is way underexposed. There is no way I could get this shot in one image without editing. So let me quickly show you what I did. Let's undo the reset and reset the brush. And then I'll paint with a bigger brush over this area, like so. Check the auto mask option, smaller brush, and go over these areas like that. Then I hide the overlay with the O button and reduce the highlights. That's it. Let me show you one more trick I like to do with waterfalls. Let me make a new brush and brush over the waterfall with a big soft brush. And now I increase the whites because I want the water to pop like so. So much for part one of our Lightroom adjustment brush tutorial. Next up is part two with amazing features like isolating on white, isolating on black, refining your mask by color and much, much more. In the meantime, dig out some of your old files and practice what you've learned in this tutorial. See you next time. If this video was helpful for you, please help us rank higher in YouTube searches by subscribing, leaving a comment or simply spreading the word.